This is an unorthodox approach to mishandling a snow emergency. Usually, if we could fake it, we'd be in constellation. Speaking of faking it, let's pretend Justin is here. Yeah. On top of that, how about this guy? Nice crack shot. Wes. Yeah, you know who is here. Solo. Tosa. Using old graphics. Not this one, though. Welcome to the emergency. Snow Day Special. Yeah, folks. That's right. Let's all soak in some of those live jams. They were live at some point. could meet. So, instead of letting you all down, the sass boys and I, we made a tireless effort to work through new technology to then figure out, unless we wanted to shell out a bunch of money, there was no way we were going to be able to do a live show together last minute from three separate locations. And so here we are. from the camper, the emergency snow show. And I don't even know if there's people out there. I know Wes is out there. He better be out there. See, Wes, that's when you usually turn the music down, but now I've got to do everything. But I can tell you, this is the Sass Boys that were live at some point, some point in time. Anyway, since I can't take a break, by switching the camera to Wes and Justin. I'm just gonna switch between unflattering shots of myself. I look very Roman there, but I have to say, it is nice to be home. I can't look out the window and see all those faces pressed up against the glass, but I can imagine the Catskill vibe right now, and the fact that I should be shoveling the sidewalk outside of Constellation, but instead, I'm stuck here. All right, I know what you're all thinking. What the hell are we gonna do if we don't have the sass boys? But I've still got the phone lines hooked up. That's right, they can't react to me. And hopefully this juxtaposes when they are live and lets everyone know the importance of that 
very subtle dynamic between live musician and improvisational puppetry. Anyway, looks like my man bun's a little messy tonight. I can't even believe we're live streaming. But where the heck are you, Chad? I know Chaz, which as well, he must have signed off. But, all right, hold on a second. I will bring it down a little bit. Anyway, you could still call that number right now. We're gonna do a short version of the show, probably a half an hour, 45 minutes long. And I'm gonna sit here and answer all your questions. As if you're gonna call in. Come on now. I know Kita was supposed to call in at 7.15, so Kita, if you're watching, you can call in before that. Anyway. We can just be together in silence if we have to. I had nothing planned. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do right now, other than provide a little eye candy. It's cold outside. Let's talk about that. Whoever spent some time on the West Coast that's originally from the East Coast, maybe you have that same sentiment where you miss this kind of weather. You miss these days. These days where you're... Hold on, let me check my audio levels. It's gonna be hard to blame all this on Wes if he's not here. Okay, it looks okay. Anyway. There's these days where I have all these emotional attachments to my memories. Attachments to the seasons, to the snow days, where I used to play outside in the snow on those school days that didn't exist. All the emotions in there, the feeling of camaraderie and community as all the kids used to line up to play either hockey or football on the pond. And of course, by all this, I mean the me on Earth, not in the odd dimension. It is that alternate reality of being a human child that I get nostalgic for every now and then. Yeah, that's it, guys. Change the mood. That's it. I can feel it coming on. Are we even still alive? Someone put something in chat. This is a gosh darn emergency snow day special. And if you want me to say something entertaining, I'm gonna need, there we go, we got a chat, hold on. Wesley Harper, super fan. In fact, Wesley is the only one to type anything in chat. Wes, can you type the amount of people that are watching? Just so I have an idea. I'm gonna wait for you for the lag. There are four people watching. That's amazing. Who would have thought? I guess this hurts our average viewer count in going for uh, three. Okay, so someone just left. So I know that RuVM's in there because they're nearby. And I know that Wes is in there. Yeah, that's right. And no Chi Bear. So dope. This is a very intimate emergency snow day special. It probably has something to do with the fact that I lost stream in the beginning. So I had to restream it. Anyway, one could say that I feed off. All right, Wes, calm down. Anyway, one could say that I feed off the energy of the sass boys. But if we can get a caller here, <coughs> Wes, anybody, then maybe I could feed off you now. Who knows? That's the number right there. Wes is trying to figure out Nochi Bear right now. I feel like some people have told me who they are, and I still kind of blocked it out and played dumb. I brought my tech guy with me. All right, we've got a caller. Hey, caller, you're on the air. 
Let me guess. Wes. How'd you guess? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Oh, I finally get the experience. I know. You, oh my gosh. Hold on one second. Sounds like... Okay, there we go. This is good. Sounds like the audio levels are worse than usual. Are they? Why don't you describe them? No, that's just, that's just a joke. Oh, uh, it is? Would you say <laughs> yeah. they're even better than usual? Because I don't have any backseat drivers? Yeah, I, w- I would say now that everything's under your control, it looks like you finally figured the show out. Yeah, that's right. I wish I made a graphic for you, Wes. But that's I wasn't okay. even sure we were getting off the ground, so to speak. Anyway. Yeah, it, that snow behind you looks beautiful. Thank you. And you like my last minute graphic? Yes. Okay. Well done. Yeah. That's great. Anyway. So, Wes, obviously you called because you need help. What can I help yes. you with? Um, well, I have two, I have two questions. Mm-hmm. My first question is, do you know who Nochi Bear is? Because they named my father by name in the chat comments. And, and um, I want to know how that's possible. That's my first question. I feel like Nochi Bear has revealed themselves to me at some point. But like I said, I kind of just want to lay low and not blow up someone's spot. But Nochi Bear, do you have a, a like clue you can give Wes in the chat? Yeah, give me a hint. Give me a hint. Is Nochi Bear and still then I... there? Or is it just you and I on the stream? Uh, it's still three people, so it looks like it's me, Rosanna, and Nochi Bear. Hey, did you say Rosanna or did you mean Ruby M? <laughs> I meant Ruby M. All right, we like anonymity here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, here's my here's my wow. I can hear Ruby M laughing in the background. I know. Uh, I know. It's like, you know what? That's what irritates me whenever I uh, whenever I look at a Stephen Colbert clip. It irritates the crap <laughs> out of me when you can hear his wife laughing in the background like it's supposed to add some sort of humor to it which i stop watching yeah, those clips because i think he's lame as hell these days but yeah does that make me your wife typically when we're doing the show yeah that's right you're my laugher wife you're my, <laughs> that's beautiful you're my giggle wife sorry about that anyway. i love it yeah but uh, we all know we got a little bit there. I know I, I need someone laughing in the background to make me feel as though I'm being heard. Anyway, this is probably not entertaining for anyone else but us. So let's just That's okay. do it because there might have been people that tuned in or are tuning in at some point tonight expecting a show, but they never got any promotion. So they probably don't think it's happening. Wes. Well, I do have a serious question for you. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can't pay you if that's a question. <laughs> no, okay. I'm never, I'm never asking that question again after what happened last. Time. Yeah, that's right. So, what do you do if the only store in town that's open is Stewart's, and all they have are frozen DiGiorno pizzas? and um, TGI Friday's barbecue chicken nuggets and six packs of and six packs of beer and you really want all of those and you you did actually walk there in between failing to set up the show and the show starting and you bought those three things but what do you do if you also want some nutrition in your life yeah that's going to be a tough one nutrition at Stewart's is an oxymoron yeah. um, so <laughs> But, you know, I don't want to hate on Stewart's. I love the fact that uh, they put a Stewart's right there in Catskill as if we need another gas station. Um, But don't they have bananas and stuff like that? I know they do. Bananas? I didn't even look. Yeah, you should. I didn't even... Did you buy these items or no? Yeah, I bought a, I'm putting it in the oven right now. I bought a DiGiorno pepperoni pizza, um, personal size, and I bought TGI Friday's barbecue chicken nuggets. 
but perhaps I should put my snow gear back on um, and go look for some bananas. You know what? Wes, I think you deserve it. I think you should eat dirty tonight. That's what I think. <laughs> if you go try, if you go out looking for health right now, you might find the same empty abyss that weighs your soul down like an anchor weighed down with Mitch McConnell's neck skin into the dark sea of hell. Just like when we tried to find a way to stream together tonight. I think you gotta throw your hands in the air and go, I give up. I shall have DiGiorno and some... I'm a little bit worried about these TGI Friday things, though. I think that's super dirty. But the DiGiorno yeah. is probably okay. But eat them both. And it's the thoughts that you have in your mind when you eat them that's probably the most important at this point. I once talked to a 94-year-old woman who had been smoking cigarettes her whole life. And I asked her, what's the secret? You've been smoking cigarettes for almost 80 years since she was 16 years old. And she said, I only think good thoughts while I'm inhaling. <laughs> think about that. I, and it makes I sense. I love it. You're breathing in that death juice, that death smoke, but then you trick yourself into thinking it's healthy. You can do that with those nuggets, barbecue nuggets. I mean, yeah. yowza, not even the chicken wings. You went for the nuggets, okay. Well, yeah, I wanted I wanted um, those pureed tendons too. Yeah, I know. The whole shebang. You throw it all yeah. into a mix. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you do a little ritual, Wes? Why don't you do a little ritual about when you eat those nuggets? Why don't you imagine that you're bringing in joy into your body and the utmost health, and then imagine in your body? And I'll tell you a little trick here, because I know a hypnotherapist, <laughs> that your immune system is woken up by tapping on your chest and smelling. So, this is what I want you to do. When you eat those barbecue nugs, I want you to tap on your chest, smell the nuggets right before you eat them, and tell yourself your body is perfectly happy, perfectly strong, and perfectly healthy, and that these nuggets are going to bring health and joy to your body, and they're going to bring joy to the universe and to everyone you love. Let's do a little experiment here. Imagine that. Set your intention away from guilt and towards total acceptance. That sounds beautiful. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna arrange all the nuggets in a circle around my DiGiorno personal pizza, and then I'm gonna take a deep inhale and tap on my chest um, and tell myself that they're nourishing my body and soul. Yeah, you, you're eliciting a response, and I'm not joking here. You're eliciting a response from your <clears throat> immune system saying, these are friends. Those nuggets are friends, Wes. They're fr <laughs> friendly nuggets. Little friend nugs. Yeah. I love that. You're Where on my chest do I tap? You tap right in your, like, uh, right above your solar plexus. Okay. I'm not joking, it's real. That's how... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, thank you. Yeah, we can overcome this. And you're making me very hungry, I have to say. <laughs> And I usually eat frozen pizzas from Hannaford's. But you know what kind I get? Flatbread. American flatbread pizza. Which is a, a company that, uh, you know, they, they have different franchises. But they were in Burlington. And they have uh, a brewery in-house. And they had incredible beer. And wood uh, oven fire yeah, pizza. That that sounds delicious. I wish they had a better variety of frozen pizzas at Stewart's. I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, just the fact that it exists so, I guess, justifies its existence of being built, even though the whole uh, structure fell down at one point, if you remember that. <laughs> Which I was like, yeah. oop, 
it's off to an auspicious start. But, uh, yeah, you know, we can be thankful for Stuarts. You know what, Wes? You're reminding me I need to be a little more positive on the show. Oh, my goodness, Wes, do you see that? Oh, yes, and I can, um, I can finally block them because I'm an admin. Why don't, why do we want to block bigfollows.com? They're only <laughs> reflecting how many followers we have right now. And then, and then showing that we're going big time. Big yeah. time. Yeah. Maybe I should, maybe I should direct message them instead. Yeah. It's ridiculous. RuVM's really active in the chat tonight. Yeah. You I know, wonder who that is. I wonder who that is too, Wes. <laughs> I have I, a follow-up I, question. Yeah. Go do, ahead. You, do you think? Do you think if I do that ritual of tapping on my chest and telling my body and soul that it's good for me that I could eat TGI Fridays barbecue chicken nuggets from Stewart's every day? You know what? That would be a great experiment. You remember that documentary, like, Super Size Me or something like that? <laughs> we can do that with you, Wes. Yeah. You come down to the shop, which I'm not at right now, and then what you can do is we can take before and after pictures once a week and see how your body's <laughs> feeling. And then if you have medical bills, you can sign a, a kind of waiver thing so that I'm not held accountable. What I love that. Yeah, it sounds very chummy. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No, but we could seriously do that because I have seen instances where people had allergies to certain plants and like they would go out into a field or like say an allergy to cheese. All right. And then you get yourself in a semi hypnotic state. This is not legally hypnosis advice people i'm not giving you advice to do this this is strictly for fun anyway this is real all right so for fun anyway I, you could tap on your chest and you're basically i've seen people do it for flowers and over time they ended up not having an allergic reaction because I think the scents, especially, especially in the United States, that we underestimate is our sense of smell. That is deeply attached to trauma and to our immune system. So when you tap on this uh, whatever in your chest, I forget the technical term, you're awakening your immune system. And then if you inhale and smell the thing you're about to eat, and then convince your subconscious mind in a very literal way that it is okay for you, then you eventually let go of the attacking of your own system. The problem is, why was your system attacking it in the first place? So if it's not good for you, this brings up a very, very poignant question of mind over matter. Do we want to trick our bodies into thinking barbecue nuggets are good for us? You know what I mean? You can do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm convinced you can. But what are the repercussions? Yeah, maybe not every day. Maybe just um, once in a while as comfort food. And then uh, I'll go back to my regular eating habits. Tech guy, if I'm gonna let you in my home, can you not get in the camera shot? Your hair looks like crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Okay. Is it the same tech guy? Are you gonna pout? Okay, good. No. He's not gonna pout. He's uh, accepting his fate as second fiddle that's invisible. It's for the greater good of the show. Anyway, Wes, we're breaking records here. We've been streaming for a half an hour now, and it looks like we can just keep talking and testing it out. This is like product testing, right? 
Yeah, and and you're uh, you're up to six people watching now. Are you kidding me? I thought we were alone. Six right. whole people. I better step my game up. All right, people. Handsome. Emergency snow special. Alright, we're gonna have this talk one more time or what? Anyway, Wes, I have here on if let's pretend this is a talk show, Wes. Since not many people call in, I'd be like I have here on my show Sass Boy, Wes Harper, Wesley Harper. And that's not giving away his identity because he gives you a face value in his Twitch chat name. And Wes and I have been talking about the merits of places during emergency situations that are open. Namely, Stewart's. Stewart shops. Yeah. That are open and only house food that's basically poisoning you and how to trick your body in a very irresponsible, hypnotic way into accepting the food, and whether or not that's a good idea. The bad idea side was, there are gonna be long-term consequences. The good idea side was, that we can't allow that kind of doubt to come into our minds and influence our subconscious as it goes and, uh, you know, digests the food. So we need to trick ourselves in a good way by convincing ourselves that those barbecue nuggets are doing good and that we're bringing joy into our body. Because let me say this, Wes, I got another thought. What's that? This could be a good thing in the long run when people don't have a lot of money and if people don't have access to nutritional foods, could there be a system that's developed in which you can help their, those people where their body kind of tricks itself into extracting the maximum amount of nutrition from whatever they have to eat? Because you know that there are monks that have gone weeks and weeks without even eating, but sustaining a certain amount of vitality, it brings up a very, very, very poignant question. What is possible in the human body that is metanormal? What can we do that we haven't evolved yet into? Could we sustain ourselves on a single orange for two months? Could we take one breath and be good for hours? What do you think, Wes? Have we, are we shortchanging ourselves by being rational with these things? Um, I'm not sure, but I do know that it looks like I burned the bottom of all of the chicken nuggets. That's, that's okay. A little nugget burn happens to us all when we're calling into a streaming show. Hey, Joker They're Patrick, 25 says hi. Sorry, I want to shout out. Oh, because, hey. You know. Yeah. Steffi hey, Puff. Jo hey, Joker. Hey, Joker Patrick. Hey, Steffi Puff. Can I? Yes, Wes is on the phone. And can I just recommend um, barbecue chicken nuggets from TGI Fridays that you can buy in the freezer section at Stewart's? All right. And I just did your little, I just did your little ritual, and I ate the first one, and uh, wow, little. it smells and tastes, it smells and tastes so good, and it's really nourishing. And sorry, I didn't mean to be demeaning with that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not offended. Um, that's amazing, Wes. I think I can speak for all of us here in chat that we wish your body well with those nuggets. And we wish that you eat them with grace. And I think we were on to something. Imagine if the world could send blessings through some sort of subconscious trance work into the food that people that don't have access to nutritional food get, that they receive. It's pretty amazing. I love that. It's pretty amazing. I love that um, 
I've never heard a mystic take on food justice before. Yeah, I mean, instead of being like, hey, we need to give you access to nutritional food, but, you know, as the sass boy track slows down into chaos, I have to say this. <laughs> See how it feels? Oh, wait, you're not listening. Anyway. I can't tell. You can't tell. Listen, it's slowing down. And that was synchronistic. Because I don't think we want to do an experiment with those people. But we could do an experiment with you. With barbecue nugs. Because that's not nutritious. I think we all know that right now. But... Yeah. What, what's wrong with eating ground up tendons and stuff? The problem is how those chickens are raised inhumanely. Am I right or am I right? You're right. That's a real problem. It's not the ground up tendons. It's that those chickens have horrible lives. Yeah. And I worked on a chicken farm in college. I should I should know better, honestly. Uh, tell us about it, Wes. Unless you're eating. No, that's fine. I just took my pizza out of the oven. I'm going to let it cool. I'll, I'll tell you all about it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I would wake up at um, 4.30 in the morning on Mondays and Wednesdays, my senior year of college, for five college credits. Yeah. And I would meet um, this woman named Kelly in the parking lot of a Walmart, and I would get in her truck. And then we would drive out to... Uh, this chicken farm that had about eight chicken coops about the size of a basketball court each. And then we would catch chickens that were ready for slaughter with this long metal hook that we would wrap around one of their feet and drag them towards us. And then we would pick them up by one leg and then two legs and shove them in this plastic crate and uh, take them to a slaughterhouse in Providence, Rhode Island. And then I would help work at the farmer's market and be like, oh, yeah, these are, they're all like, it's not cage free, but they all have enough space to like walk around, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it was, um, it was, uh, you know how they say the standards for organic are like a little low? Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of, it was kind of like that. And honestly, in terms of compared to factory farming, did those have chickens have a better life than factory farm chickens? Yes. But were they still dragged by metal hooks and shoved 10 at a time into plastic crates and driven to Rhode Island? Yes. So I should really, um, I should really be thinking more before I'm buying these TGI Fridays chicken nuggets, to be honest. Yeah, I know. I mean, so... This is some good, good self-reflection you're, can you you're talk putting about me chicken through. wings? What are your thoughts on chicken wings? Um, Buffalo wing style chicken wings. Yeah, every time I've ordered chicken wings since this experience, I've, uh, I can't help counting in my mind how many um, chickens it adds up to. I know. It's, it's like a lot. The, the bane of my existence because I love chicken yeah. wings. What do I do, Wes? I ate those I think... uh, fake chicken wings at one point. It's really what you want is crispy skin, buffalo sauce, <laughs> and blue cheese. Am I right? It's a tri the holy trinity of comfort food. It is the holy trinity. Although, can I tell you a theory? Yeah. I have. I think um, when we die, we're confronted with um, all the wingless bodies of chickens that we've eaten over the course of our lifetime. Are we, like, supposed to eat the bodies afterwards? Uh, we're just kind of, we're just kind of surrounded and then judged based on, you know, how many we've created. Yeah, but how do those wingless bodies kind of operate without wings. I mean, do we just mm. watch them run around in circles? And if we, have <laughs> if we have patience, do they eventually evaporate as apparitions? I mean, how long do we have to watch them? How are we confronted? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I haven't developed my, my theory quite yet. Yeah. 
I'm wondering. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's an endurance test, and we have to um, we have to grapple with the the bounty of the slaughter we've created, and if we can mentally persevere, they they evaporate and we proceed on to the next life. But if we can't persevere and we break down, um, we instantly incarnate in the body of a chicken in a slaughterhouse, getting shoved into a plastic crate. Yeah, you know what? I think you're onto something there, which is just basically, I don't think there is a linear kind of framework to incarnation. So you could live a life and then reincarnate, not in some sort of linear temporal existence, but you would incarnate as something within the lifetime that you lived. Think about this, that we're all so connected that you could incarnate as your own mother or father in the next lifetime, wow. right? Think about that. So it's like the network of connection is so highly woven that we really have to think about what Buddhist monks were trying to tell us with their nauseating detail. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because it holds us all accountable on this moral level to something a little too acute for me. Because I like to eat my chicken wings, but not tonight. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah. said Buddhist monks are a little nauseating. I appreciate that. Well, they got they got the right idea and they got their own thing going but you know who really breaks my heart Sri Ori Bindo Indian mystic uh, yeah I don't know who that is yeah you know who else Meister Eckhart got it right there there's a few of them you know Carl Jung was good as far as an application of an egoic life in Western style society. I kind of use him as a model sometimes of how to engage and in deepen into the game, so to speak. But I always wonder who knows what? I haven't really encountered any enlightened beings in this lifetime in the flesh. Have you, Wes? I mean, like, um, truly, quote-unquote, enlightened beings. I guess I couldn't, that would be, I wouldn't say I'm the best judge, but um, based on my judgment, no, I have not. Yeah, we're all inside Although I, the game. I did meet some monks in <laughs> in India who just seemed completely content um, putting butter on bread and doing their laundry by hand. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff you can learn how to do. And you can love it. Yeah. You can love every little minute of life and bring your consciousness through meditation down to the essence of each moment. Exploring and exploring and bringing yourself closer and closer to a greater understanding of your particular consciousness's bent in this present moment reality. However, mm. What I want to know is, how do we push the limits? How do we find out the capacity of humanity that is woven into the meaning of humanity in a narrative that is ongoing, right? I look back into Roman and Greek thought. I look back into the 1940s, the 1960s, the 1720s. I look at America, a little blip on the map. I look all over the place for how I can relate to the consciousness in relation and juxtaposition to being born into, I think it was a beatnik Czech Kerouac that said something like a meat wheel skin bag, <laughs> but you find yourself incarnated <laughs> in life, in the human experience. And I look at people and go, oh really? Oh really? You know what's going on right now? See, that's what wow. I'm saying. I haven't met anyone that knows what's going on. And so, where is the wonder, 
the wonder can be elicited in any individual because we're all faking it. We think we know what's going on, where we came from, where we're going. And I love to look back into history and see what the cultural juxtaposition is. But again, Wes, let's not get far off of barbecue nuggets and frozen pizza no, I, here. I actually, I love how far off barbecue chicken nuggets you've got. No, it, it was, is barbecue That was nuggets. very insightful. Barbecue nuggets is your reality. And if you can tap your chest and trick your subconscious immune system to thinking there's nutrients in the nuggets, then why can't you tap your chest and ask your body where its origin comes from and trick your mind into thinking, hey, how do I become a little more enlightened here? I'd like to explore that some more while I eat frozen pizza because it's no different than having a Roman orgy. Wow. Really? Or being at a Trump rally. I don't know. I mean, I imagine not. Uh, at any given moment, you can check into your present reality. You can go, I am here now. The echelon of my understanding juxtaposed against my previous experience creates a fake temporal linear equation that I then juxtapose against my higher mind and super mind, super ego, and then I explode into this unknowing understanding that human existence, I have no idea what it is. And the magic and mystery of that propels me to a new heightened understanding that I need to explore in the future. But at the given moment, have been given a kind of yellow brick road to everywhere. And then I look around me and I see Go America signs everywhere. Sure, but I can be just where I am, heightened, look around and have no enemies and no allies, just a bunch of human beings going through the experience on their own echelon levels. And then yeah. I have no enemies. And that makes mass media and cable news ridiculous. Am I right or am I right? You're right, that's beautiful. Yeah, no doubt. Those nuggets are gold nuggets. See how we turned them into gold nuggets? Yeah. I'm so grateful. Me too, Wes. Man, we were so close to having a multi-channel stream tonight. <laughs> that would have been dope. It would have been dope. It's in the future. I promise you. Yeah. We'll get that, because that was kind of cool. It was cool, and we just need a... Uh... We just need an IT person. Yeah, I mean, we need that green stuff that all of us here on Earth have to think about, which is called fiscal currency. Anyway, uh, well, we need that green stuff to get the right kind of equipment so that we can get a computer, so that we can have a video mixer and an audio mixer, and then maybe we can do it all. So, Wes, I gotta ask you a question. You plan on yeah. doing some traveling this year, don't you? Possibly, as long as I can feel a little bit safe. Yeah, it's getting pretty crazy out there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Constellation is contemplating doing only remote readings. Yeah, that sounds smart. Yeah, it's pretty tough. But, you know, we all have to survive. And good thing Joe Manchin exists to temper the government's ability to support us. <laughs> yeah, thank God for Joe Manchin. He's a new kind of evil. So let's all send it out right now. Our intention, Joe Manchin wakes the fuck up. Yeah, let's all tap the United States chest and tell it that Joe Manchin is good for it. 
body and No, soul. that's what that's what CNN is for. CNN is tapping the chest <laughs> and smelling the shit that is out there. That's right. Fox News is obvious. Yeah. CNN is yeah. just filthy. Let's take a moment CNN to just think about filthy. how filthy CNN is. You know what I saw today, Wes? Some headlines What's about that? CNN is trying to justify the non-immediate $2,000 checks that were promised by everybody for the Georgia elections. And even though there is video and audio footage of Joe Biden saying, hey, basically a George Bush moment saying, read my lips. $2,000 checks will be sent out immediately. You can get immediate help in the hands of needy Americans if you vote these people in. Well, those people got voted in. And DC is political theater. So here we are a month away from that. And yeah. the Democrats are like, actually, they're sending out little propaganda that says, we already put a $600 down payment on your $2,000 checks, and we'll send you the other $1,400 maybe sometime in April. They have no idea how many people are going to have to let go of what they were holding on to by the time mid-March or April happens. They're out of touch with reality, aren't they? They're in a big, yes. fat, shitty mansion. It should be a um, it should be a requirement that in order to run for federal level political office, you have to live for one year <clears throat> at or below the poverty line. Well, that would be interesting because then we'd have a lot of experiments with the uh, TGI Fridays barbecue nuggets. Maybe that should be yeah. that all politicians need to go eat TGI Fridays barbecue nuggets every day for one week and see how their body feels. Yeah. If they can it overcome is. it. Yeah, it is a. Uh... That check, that check hoax is not great. But it was nice how um, I liked Lady Gaga singing at Joe Biden's inauguration. That wasn't that great. I missed it because I don't partake in. Uh, I do not partake in propaganda. Ha! You got me. This is usually cogs. Feral hot oh, dogs. Oh, JJ, hit. JJ wants to call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we three way? Probably not. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna call him. Hold on. Okay. I just want to say, we all need to stop finding enemies, and I know I'm pointing your enemy to be Joe Manchin and Joseph Biden. I don't want any enemies. The idea is we, we need are. a human consciousness. Okay. Here we are. All right. We got a three-way call with the Sass Boys live on air. This is it's getting hey, it's listen, getting hot. This is Ooh. we switched over to only <laughs> fans, right? <laughs> this is Tolzar's Discount Wisdom for Lost Lovers featuring the Sass Boys, only fans after hours. All right. Yeah, it's only we need fans because it's so hot. You know what's weird? That first track ran out as soon as Justin called in. So let's get the heat back on. All right, here we go. You look a little chilly, Tolzar. Or you should be. Are you gonna warm me up right now with some nugget talk? N Did you say nugget talk? Yeah, you missed the party, buddy. You got a feral hot dog. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to Stewart's and I got some barbecue chicken nuggets and frozen pizza. Oh, those kind of nuggets. Yeah. What are the other kinds? You know, we should keep this show PG as as it's always been. So I'll just move it move it on to uh, hey, Tolzar's discount nuggets. 
Yeah, it's from <laughs> Nuggets from Stewart. How, how many people are watching right now? Seven. Seven people? All right. Yeah. Well, seven I, I people and one cat. Yeah, I don't want to offend anyone. We're going to keep it PG here. That's why I'm making obscure references, and if they're not obscure to you, then you are PG-13. Anyway, well, I would say here... Well, how are... Yeah, Justin, I, I, I wanted. I just want to know how we're, how we're the Nuggets. That's, yeah. Oh. Hey, Ruvian. Uh, you guys keep talking. Um, they were great. I... Tolzar taught me a rich a ritual to how ha- Tolzar taught me a ritual to how I can tap on my chest and tell my body that um, the, the nuggets are nourishing my body and soul. And uh, mm. I did I did that, and I've eaten all of them over the course of this call that I've been having. And I'm about to start on my frozen pizza. Nice. Wow, who is that? Is that the producer? Is that the fucking tech guy on the live stream? No, yeah. I'm not sure why he got I mean, in the shot there. <laughs> well, he looks fucking, he looks psyched. Hey, yeah, that guy was, uh, Hold, you know Hold what? Or can you bring that tech guy back? All right, get the hell in here. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, he must be an intern. <laughs> he looks way too excited. Don't be to shy. Be on this Get show. back in here. Instagram handle. That guy looks like. Just kidding. He needs some help. <laughs> he looks like. <laughs> Man, it's lonely in the camper. Except, I got my sweet, sweet boo here. What do you think about that, Sass? Camper sweat. Sweet, sweet, boom, camper sweat are hits in the odd dimension. I forgot to tell you guys that. It's like we have, uh, we've reached the top of the charts of the odd dimension. I'm not surprised. Yeah. The Sass is trending in that dimension, huh? Yeah. Well, you didn't mention me, Justin, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I would say this. I let my tech guy come in because he confuses me. I feel like he never does his hair for the show. All right, Justin, here, I've got a question for you before you have a question for me. Are you ready? I am prepared. Okay, Justin. I'm prepared for this. What do you think you can do personally to bring people's momentum more towards a humanity perspective, an overview of existence that brings people into compassion for humanity instead of drawing lines in the sand? What can I do? Well, as an individual. Hmm. Well, I guess being involved in stuff like this sort of helps. I hope. Um, I think you can you can generally play music and do puppetry with your friends and just have fun and that's like that's kind of enough sometimes sometimes it's not I guess because right now what else can you really do yeah I know what you're saying what can we do and you know what I was always drawn to this Einstein quote that said you won't It's something like this, I'm paraphrasing, all right? You will not find the answers to the problems of one paradigm by trying to answer them within that same paradigm. So 
It feels like, to me, one of the things you can do most for human existence is to ask people to search for a new paradigm within themselves. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's always a fair thing to ask of people. How do you rationally and practically search for a new paradigm within yourself, though? Music and puppetry, maybe? Uh, be a little okay with or be comfortable with a loss of expectation. Comfortable I guess. in a new paradigm? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's be okay with the discomfort of not of failed expectations, I guess. Or be, just be okay with discomfort, I guess. I think you nailed it, Justin, because expectations seems to be the key word here. I mean, expectations echo from one old paradigm into a new one. Am I right? The expectations of what hold you like tentacles reaching out from another dimension to bring you back into that old paradigm. Hey, we got BBB. We got greetings pals in here. I'm about to cry. Wow, all the, all the stars are here. Yeah, the heavy hitters. Yeah. A TDW. I know. Poor TDW LL. heavy hitters. Justin, I'm... I think it's not impractical to start to question right now in human existence as we're in the school. Think about it. Students within a school create new systems. They create systems that are beyond what the founders of the school had intended. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, for better or for worse. Yeah, for better or worse. But that might be the ticket to understand, to think about it, and to reframe some of the questions. The key here, though, Justin, is to use your heart, to not want to do harm. But like Wes and I were talking about, with those concepts, I haven't met any people that have used those concepts to get all the way to enlightenment. So where do we start as practical average or maybe above average beings on earth trying to figure out what's the most we can do in a time like this? I think it's to push our limits of what our capacities are into a meta capacity, a meta normal capacity in which we tap into things that were only available in the past through hardcore discipline. How do we do that? Maybe it's music. Maybe we take the ceiling off of things and we ride a convertible right into these days, but we drive responsibly in a convertible with a big engine. What do you think? Yeah, like they do out in uh, California. Oh, don't get me started. I love California. Well, <laughs> that's where uh, the spiritual awakening of California comes from. It's convertibles. Did you know that? Enlighten us, please, Justin. Tell the story. Yeah. Tell us the, con- tell us the big convertible story. So I can keep well, eating this frozen pizza. Oh, yeah. Wes, are you still there? In... Yeah, but uh, um, have you been able to hear me chewing or no? No. This is Justin. Okay. That's... We're going to tell you. put great. the nuggets on the pizza? Uh, no, I Box. ate all the nuggets already, oh, and I did my ritual, and now I'm on to the pizza. So you just you take it away. I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Y- you know. Oh, and you got a graphic. That's so nice. Ooh. I didn't get. I didn't get a graphic. Oh, shut your mouth, Wes. I'm sorry. Was that live? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I I'm mean, just maybe joking. once you reach tier three. 
<laughs> then, uh, yeah, you know, Justin I know is the tier three emoji. All right, go ahead, Justin. Let's let's yeah, hear about this. That's what this I is tell so Oh, the uh, yeah. Well, you know, back in a time before there were chicken nuggets, really. Yeah. widely available to most Americans and all the all the open minded folks and the great thinkers were going out west right yeah cause you know here in the northeast it's all bogged down with the industry and the archetypes of the past the west held a new unforeseen future a new paradigm if you will yeah and everybody got out there they're all wearing sunglasses they're all smoking funny stuff all loving each other and then they realized hey man I could just cut the top off of this car and bam everybody was spiritually awakened. Yeah. Keep going. What do you think that means? And, um, you know, then fast forward 50, 60 years, and Wes is putting chicken nuggets in his belly. But as far as the implications of the uh, convertible spiritual awakening, it's just another turn of the uh, another turn of the the pancake as I like to say I don't know man yeah turn of the pancake if you catch my drift I like that yeah but that implies that there's a recipe that there's something we should be cooked at a certain temperature some people wish for alien intervention in the human race and maybe that's me who knows i have some experience in the odd dimension but i can tell you this justin i feel like nothing imagine this there has been no intervention from the other dimensions to help the human race because there's a lesson attached to it just like there's no one to go and save you when you have a lesson to learn. I think that just emphasizes that all this Wait, Tolga, is a school. Are you, are, you, are you phase one of the alien intervention to help the human race? Am I part of it? Yeah. Are you even an alien if you're from another dimension? Shouldn't there even be another word for that? Uh, well... A Demalion? I don't think I'm an alien. Yeah. Because I'm not reaching you in your dimension. The term alien to me applies to beings that are within your own dimension, but outside the scope of your realization. So they're from other planets in your galaxy or from another universe, because these are all human concepts that you are currently grasping imagine the term alien as a neanderthal it would probably be someone from a different tribe yeah well not much has changed since then apparently i think it is just because... our... all right go ahead wes sorry frank frank i i just wanted to um say frankie fitch we were talking about real aliens yeah, real aliens. As opposed to, um, like, opposed Mexicans? To... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I have no idea yeah. what you just said. We're, we're, not getting, we're, we're not getting canceled on our first... On our I'm, first just, um... I'm just saying that's the kind of tribal mentality that hasn't changed in I... many of the uh, political actors. That is, right that is rational, a rational and somewhat uh, controversial point of view of basically 
how people view other people. And the whole point of this is to bring people together. And I trust you to, to do that. And so I will say this. What we see as a threat to ourselves is very much defined. Whoa. Oh, sorry. Something happened in the camera I'm not going to talk about. Um, with uh, our own sphere of what we think we are coming out of, the remnants of a cracked eggshell as we emerge as some being that can fly, but are told our wings are somewhat dangerous. So, I will say this. When you have, even if it's Joe Manchin, even if you have disregard or negative feelings towards another human being, the way to operate in tangible, rational reality while simultaneously holding a kind of compassion to me seems to be about looking at what kind of damage it does being able to see what if I take this perspective, what is it going to do to the world? And being able to hold this objective perspective from a human perspective doesn't happen very often. Anyway, I need a time out. So I'm gonna give you the woods. Is take there it over, Wes. Right now? Huh? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> talk. Great. Welcome to the wood. Talk. Welcome to the wood segment of the show, everybody. Um, this is the, this is the part of the show where we look out at the woods. We think about how um, metaphorically we're we're all kind of sitting behind a computer, looking at a live, looking at a pre-recorded video loop of the snow coming down in the woods. Um, and we're that divorced from our environment and setting in which we live. And we just kind of, um, we kind of look at that you know, loop that looks like it's live, it looks like we're there, uh, then it spins into a different graphic. Um, and we meditate on that, that divorced nature from our physical environment. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. This is my first time talking on the show, so I'm, I'm still I, getting a, getting can, a handle on things. Can I just say that you guys screwed yourselves with what's going on musically right now? You're making a joke of yourselves. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking, but I can't wait for you to hear the kind of synchronistic timing that's going on right now. Anyway, continue. Don't let me get involved. Are we playing some? Are we playing some corny, wacky shit? Uh, no. I, I don't even. No, I don't no, think no, he no. even needs to answer that. You did, we. It's a guaranteed. Yeah. Every episode. Damn, I thought what I was saying was kind of poetic too, but I bet no, I was just. No, this is good. Keep it. I out. bet I was just. I bet I was just music, music farting behind it. Oh, I think that helps with uh, the the meditation practice to be yeah. able to uh, hear that and still meditate on these on the disconnect. Yeah, you just you just watch the musical flatulation cross your mind, and mm-hmm. you and you are you're not attached, and you just watch it sail. You watch that musical flatulation sail on past. Mm-hmm. Man, I finished my pizza too. I have no more food left. Well, keep talking then. Tell me how you can challenge the people around you to be a little bit more than they are without confusing it with your own agenda. How can you in any way universally elicit a response from other human beings that brings out the best in them on an individual basis? It's a simple question. 
JJ? See what I did there? I just um. Yeah, it's uh. I just uh. Cha- just I just cha- yeah, I just challenged him to be better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so was that the answer? All right, no. The question was to be better than yourself, not better than Wes. Yeah, I don't think he meant it to be a competition. I yeah. think you put um, <clears throat> you tr- you put people in positions. Uh, <laughs> you put you you trust people to succeed by putting them 